Hello and welcome to our new unit, unit, thermochemistry. In thermochemistry, as the name implies, thermo, which means heat, and chemistry, which is the study of matter, is going to be talking about heat in matter, either in physical or chemical changes. And so thermochemistry is the study of energy changes during chemical reactions or changes of state. So like when you burn something, which is a chemical change, energy is released. Um, in an instant cold pack, two chemicals come together and react and, and they absorb energy from the surroundings. Or when ice melts, um, ice goes from the solid phase to the liquid phase. Energy has to be absorbed in order for the molecules to just move faster and, and uh, break apart from one another. And so all of this is part of the study of chemistry, uh, thermochemistry. Um, the first law that's going to guide us is called the first law of thermodynamics. And the first law of thermodynamics states that energy is neither created nor destroyed during a chemical or physical change. So in a plant, when a plant uses the sun's energy, that energy goes into the plant, the plant uses photosynthesis to convert the energy that it's getting from the sunlight into chemical energy, energy that's stored in the bonds of the food that it makes, the glucose. Then when a zebra eats the plant, the zebra uh, metabolizes the plant, it breaks it down, and reforms uh, the atoms into new molecules uh, which releases energy uh, and so energy is released and then some of the energy is used by the zebra um, and some of the energy is just released back into the environment and then the lion eats the zebra and the same process happens uh, the lion's metabolism breaks down the zebra's molecules uh, and reforms new molecules releasing energy and some of that energy goes back into the environment and some goes for the uh, lion to use this uh, first law of thermodynamics is also called the law of conservation of energy, which is um, a, a term you've probably heard before. So what is energy? Well, energy is, is the ability to do work. And from a physics standpoint, uh, work is equal to the force that something exerts times the displacement or, or for now distance that um, that force is applied so if you're pushing a box across the floor you have to keep pushing with a force and to move it a distance across the, the floor and so you have done work and in order to do that work energy had to be transferred um, energy from the food that you ate that morning uh, turns into mechanical energy or energy moving the box and so when we talk about energy we're talking about the ability to do work the ability to uh, create a force to move something so some types of energy are kinetic energy, and we've already talked about kinetic energy. Energy, uh, Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Anything that's moving has kinetic energy. Another type is potential energy, and uh, one type of potential energy is gravitational potential energy. So if you hold something up in the air and let it go, um, it had potential energy, and then it turns into kinetic energy as it falls down. Um, but this is energy that's stored due to its position. You also have composition, compositional potential energy, like a rubber band being stretched has potential energy. You let it go, and it snaps back into place, so it had the potential to snap. Another type of potential energy is chemical potential energy, and chemical potential energy is the energy that's stored in chemical bonds. So any molecule has energy stored in those bonds, and we call that chemical potential energy, which is where we're really going to spend a lot of time this, this uh, unit. So, when energy is transferred from one place to another, um, from a hot place to a cold place, we call that heat, which is the flow or transfer of energy due to a temperature difference. So when you have a hot object and a cold object, energy is going to transfer from the hot place to the cold place. Because heat always flows from an object of higher temperature, a place where you have high kinetic energy, to a place where you have low kinetic energy of molecules. Temp low temperature and so the fast molecules will start bouncing into the slow molecules and speeding them up the hot molecules will slow down and eventually both of them will reach the same temperature and that's called thermo equilibrium when the two uh, temperatures uh, become the same due to heat flow and uh, when we talk about heat flow we're talking about uh, we use the symbol Q so Q is the amount of energy, the amount of heat, that's going to go from the hot place to the cold place. So what are some units of heat? Well, if you ate a uh, uh, an, an unit for any kind of energy, quite honestly, uh, but specifically we're going to be talking about heat, but one unit of heat is the calorie. And so if you ate something and it had 200 calories, you ate 200 
uh, calories of energy. That's the energy that the bonds uh, contain and your body can use. And that's the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of water one degree Celsius. We use the calorie here in the United States uh, all the time, um, but the rest of the world does not use the calorie. When we talk about calories most often in life, we're talking about nutritional calories. And nutritional calories are a little different than uh, the calories that we talk about in science because a nutritional calorie is actually a kilocalorie in science. A kilo meaning a thousand. So 1,000 calories is equal to one nutritional calorie. And notice nutritional calorie has a capital C, whereas the calorie in science has a lowercase c. And, and I guess this is nice because if you ate 200 uh, calories, food calories, uh, in a couple of cookies, you wouldn't want to think of that as 200,000 calories, which they really are when you talk about a science calorie. Nobody wants to talk about hundreds of thousands of calories, so um, nutritionists have divided by a thousand and called that the nutritional calorie with a capital C. The rest of the world does not use calories though. The rest of the world uses joules, which is the metric unit uh, or the SI unit for energy in the, or heat in this case. And so the joule is uh, another unit of energy and 4.184 joules is equal to one calorie. So let's do a couple of conversions using these, uh, this conversion factor and just to note this is a very important conversion factor that we will be using throughout the, uh, throughout the unit. 4.184 joules is equal to 1.0 calories. It looks like my decimal disappeared there under my ink. So 1.000 calories. So let's do a conversion. We want to convert uh, 345.7 joules into calories. So the conversion factor from joules to calorie is 1 calorie is equal to 4.184 joules. And so whenever you're doing a conversion, you always start with what you're given. And in this case, we're given 345.7 joules. Since we want to convert into calories, we're going to use our conversion factor. Um, joules is in the numerator right here. So we need to put joules in the denominator from our conversion factor. So 4.184 joules is equal to one calorie. And so now we've got our problem set up. It's just a easy one step dimensional analysis problem. We multiply the numerator, divide by the denominator. And when you do that, you get 82.62 calories. Notice I had four significant digits in my answer. So I have four significant digits in my uh, I'm sorry, four significant digits in the problem, so four significant digits in the answer. And it's a lowercase c because we're talking about uh, science calories. So what if we're talking about food calories? So notice that I have capital C here now. That means a food calorie. So we can't go directly from food calories to joules, or I, I didn't give you a conversion factor. But I do know that 1,000 science calories with a lowercase c is equal to one food calorie with a capital C. And then I also know that 4.184 joules is equal to one science calorie. And so now we have two conversion factors that will allow us to go from calories with the capital C to joules. So we start with what you're given, 325 calories with a capital C. Our first conversion is going from capital C calories to lowercase c calories, so one capital C calorie is equal to 1,000 uh, lowercase c calories, capital C calories cancel, and we're left with lowercase c calories. Then we do our conversion for calories to joules, one lowercase c calorie is equal to 4.184 joules, and lowercase c cal calories cancel, we're left with joules. So now we multiply the numerator, divide by the denominator, and we get 1.36 times 10 to the 6 joules. And notice three significant digits in my problem, so three significant digits in my answer. So that's just a couple of conversions for uh, the different units of, of heat or energy. So now we need to talk about some basic definitions um, when we talk about thermochemistry. If heat's transferring from one place to another, then we need to talk about those two different places. And the first place we can talk about is the system. The system is defined as the part of the universe, and the universe is everything, that we're focusing on. So usually this is going to be the materials involved in a chemical reaction or a phase change. Um, so if you're burning a uh, piece of wood, the system would be the piece of wood and the oxygen. Um, if you were melting an ice cube, 
then the system would be the ice cube. Everything else is called the surroundings, and that's everything else in the universe that is not your system. So in this particular case, um, our system is this purple cube, and then everything else is the surroundings. So earlier we talked about um, heat flow always goes from a hot place to a cold place, um, or a place where energy is produced to a place where there's less energy. And so in an exothermic reaction, or an exothermic process, heat flows out of the system into the surroundings. And we talked about how Q is the symbol for that. So Q, heat, is going to be lost by the system and gained by the surroundings. And we remember, we said the law of conservation of energy says that what ener energy can't be created or destroyed. So if the system loses Q amount of energy, the surroundings will gain Q amount of energy. The system, though, is losing energy, so we define that as negative Q, because it's losing energy. And then since the surroundings is gaining energy, we define that as positive Q, because it's gaining that energy. We see an increase in the temperature uh, in the surroundings. The surroundings will feel hotter, so if you measured the temperature of this, it would feel like it was getting hotter, because the surroundings are getting hotter, whereas the system is actually getting uh, losing energy. Okay, so what about an endothermic reaction? Well, in an endothermic reaction, energy flows from the surroundings into the system. So the surroundings will give Q amount of energy to the system. And in this particular case, the system gains energy, the surroundings lose energy. So we say Q, uh, Q of the system is positive because it's gaining energy, and Q of the surroundings is negative because it's losing energy we see a decrease in temperature of the surroundings. Since it's losing energy, it must be getting colder, and so the surroundings will uh, be colder. So if you ever feel something and it feels like it's getting cold, that's because it's sucking the energy out of your hand. Um, it feels cold because energy is being transferred from your hand to the system. So the general outcome is that the surroundings, the Q of the surroundings, is always going to be the opposite sign of the Q of the system, because the system always uh, is the opposite. Uh, direction of heat change as the surroundings. The signs are used to indicate the direction of energy flow, and that flow, and that's very important. Um, that we the positive and negative mean nothing but direction. Positive means gain, and negative means loss. And we always measure uh, from the surroundings perspective when we talk about uh, temperature. We're going to measure the temperature of the surroundings, uh, whether it gets hot or cold. And an increase in temperature means the surroundings gained energy, and a decrease in temperature means the surroundings lost energy, heat energy. So that's where we're going to stop for right now. Um, we'll be moving into the consequences of this and calculations in our next segment.